To talk about radioactive decay, you have to understand the difference between a stable isotope of an element and an unstable isotope of an element. A stable isotope has a balance between the number of neutrons and protons so that the strong nuclear force contributed by the protons and the neutrons together balance the, strong, the electrostatic forces of the repulsion between the individual protons. When you don't have the right proportion of neutrons acting like glue to provide that extra strong nuclear force, you get an unstable isotope. This graph shows a black line for stable isotopes, isotopes that do not decay radioactively. Then the pretty colors you see show the different ways that there are proportions that allow them to decay. We have alpha decay and beta plus or positron decay and beta minus or electron emission. The alpha decay yellow are very large isotopes. On our x-axis we have the number of protons and on our y-axis we have the number of neutrons. So we see that we have a black line of stable isotopes. This single black line is showing where the protons and the electron and the neutrons have the same amount. This stays right along. Our stable isotopes go follow that along until we get to carbon at number six then we can tell that the black line of stability zigzagging right here is shifted to the side where we have more neutrons than protons. And the larger the atom with more nucleons in it, the more the line veers off and shifts to having more neutrons than protons. So all the colored boxes are an isotope. The black line represents the isotopes that are stable. The colored boxes represent isotopes that radioactively decay. If they are above the line, the number of neutrons is greater than the number of protons. If the isotope is located below the black zigzag line, the number of neutrons is less than the number of protons. I must let you know that this lovely graph was taken from Wikipedia of all places, but it does serve the uh, point of letting you physically see what type of decays are going to happen and why they do to go back and to get a balance between the strong nuclear force and the electrostatic repulsion between the protons. Let's look closely at alpha decay. Alpha decay is the emission from very large unstable isotope nuclei at two protons and two neutrons. And the element that has two protons in it is helium. So we often represent an alpha particle as the isotope symbol for helium. Two protons two neutrons for four nucleons with a mass number of course of four and this happens in large that should be a 92 you can't read it very well that's a 92 right there that we have uranium as the last naturally occurring isotope It is unstable with 92 protons all repelling each other with electrostatic force for the number of neutrons that are there. So this undergoes spontaneous decay into the thorium isotope by emitting two of the protons and two of the neutrons as an alpha particle. And that's the alpha, the little fish. And it is two protons, two neutrons, and it leaves behind 
all the remainder of the particles and when it loses the two protons 92 minus 2 is 90 and 90 is the element thorium you'll need a periodic table to look at this there were links provided at the website the first website um, where it um, had the first video that you can use or you can go to uh, ptable.com beta decay are the uh, blue section the blue isotopes that are shown here decay in what's known as a beta decay or electron emission and this is where you have too many pro uh, too many neutrons for the number of protons present this shows a carbon isotope of carbon 14 that with the extra neutrons decays into nitrogen by the emission of an electron basically what happens is a neutron turns into a proton so the mass number increases by one a neutron becomes a proton and an electron the proton stays because it's a nucleon and can stay in the nucleus but the electron doesn't belong in the nucleus and it's emitted as what we call a beta particle there's a second type of beta emission and that's called a positron emission or beta plus that's the orange section that's on the side where there are more protons than neutrons we saw that that happened uh, when you had more protons than neutrons for the large elements you had the alpha emission where you lost the helium nucleus out of the um, original nucleus and this shows the smaller atoms that have just a few um, nucleons undergo beta decay that's the orange section and we call this a pro positron and basically like we said before that a neutron for beta minus turned into a proton and an electron this is the case where a proton turns into a neutron by removing the positiveness of the electron yeah it's a positron it's a positive an electron the mass is equivalent to that of an electron but the charge is completely the opposite something new to think about yeah but the beta decay is not usually highly common but it does occur the beta plus decay for example we have a carbon 6 10 the carbon 10 isotope is extremely unstable there are not enough neutrons so the one of the protons turns into a neutron so we used to have six protons now we just have five the element boron has five protons so we identify it now using our periodic table to see what had five protons but the number of nucleons remains the same the total number of particles are still there in the nucleus and we show the emission of a positron and that's beta plus decay the third type of radioactive decay you normally hear about is gamma emission or a gamma ray you don't see that in this chart you see beta plus beta minus alpha then fission proton neutron and showing the stable nucleides but you don't see gamma on here that's because a gamma emission is not that of a particle remember I asked you to learn the electromagnetic spectrum recently and review that what was the last one after x-ray comes gamma they're not particles it's an electromagnetic wave in other words it's energy energy released from the nucleus